<laughs> so I say your name. My name. Do I say hello or do I say my name? I think you just say, <laughs> this is Drew. Oh, and that's right. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's not like we've done it uh, twice already. I that's mean, only been that's, twice. That's not okay. many times. Okay. <clears throat> this is Drew. And this is Olivia. And we are oddly curious. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> We're like forever, amen. <laughs> um, I know why are, the intro is so hard. I don't know how to really make it hard. less awkward. So, Drew, what's what's been going on with you? Oh, um, well, I think in the last episode I talked about how I was sick, mm-hmm. um, and then I got better, and then I got sick again. <laughs> I actually went to IKEA with one of my roommates, and we walked around for four hours, and I actually felt myself getting sick again while I was there Mm -hmm. I never get sick I've been sick for like six weeks and I'm finally better today so that's my um (laughs) my win (laughs) you've been sick since we started this podcast yes oh no I'm like does that mean something no it doesn't um other than that just I'm I guess I'm happy to be healthy and alive (laughs) (laughs) um and drinking tea at your house yes I'm glad you're drinking tea at my house too. What's going on with you? Um, let's see. I don't think anything too exciting. It's been it feels like it's been a long week. What day is it? It's a Friday. I actually didn't remember when you asked. Yeah, it's so yeah, it's been a long, it's been a long discombobulated week. Yeah. Um but I was I was talking uh to you about this a little bit before. So I just feel I have to tell this story because it's amusing to me. So I had stumbled upon this thing on TikTok that was new to me, where it was like people putting in like all these fun flavored things into their water Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to drink less soda. So I was like, great, that sounds like it'd be something fun. So I went down to the Dollar Tree. I got a few flavors of like Sonic flavors. Which I didn't even know they were at the Dollar Tree. Right? That's cool. I, I love the Dollar Tree. And then there was, like, pink Starburst flavored ones. Mm. And so I was like, I'm going to, like, try that as my new, like, treat. Because yeah. then I'm still getting hydrated. But it tastes good. Yeah. And so I tried that last night. I tried the Sonic Ocean Water one. And I put it in, like, 40 ounces of water because I don't like it super sweet. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is really good. This is going to be a fun new drink. And then I hadn't even finished it. And I literally felt like I was going to throw up. Oh, no. And it felt like I had done, like, a bunch of shots of tequila. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and <laughs> Sonic, what are you doing? But really, it was just, like, sugar water. But is it actually sugar, or is it, like... It's, um, it's aspartame. Aspartame. Oh, my gosh. But that's in Diet Coke. And so I was like... Yeah. Oh, I, that should be fine for me. But apparently, uh, I don't do well with dyes, like, uh, like, the dyes that are in foods like that. And... Yeah. I hate that when you're trying to be healthy, you actually, uh, your body punishes you. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, surprise, this actually has like a bunch of chemicals yeah. in it. You're not being healthy. What about like the Mio drops? Probably the Mio. I feel like those I've, are probably I've good. tried those before and they didn't make me yeah. feel anything, but I don't like it too sweet. So it's like, I do less. Um, I do like a drop for like 40 ounces, mm-hmm. but it really helps you drink like a gallon of water if you want, because it's like... It's like treat water. Right. <laughs> I'm like, it's delicious water. I mean, I already like water. Yeah, but... me actually. Yeah, me too. I'm like, don't. We're like, we like water. Don't like it. Don't judge don't worry. But anyway, I'm like, I'll just, I'll stick with Diet yeah. Coke because it doesn't make me Oh, I figured it'd be like, I'll stick with tea. And I'm oh. like, well, Diet Coke works too. I mean, pretty much any beverage mm-hmm. that doesn't make It's me because we're uh, beverage, we're bed, we're bed. <laughs> We're beverage friends. We're beverage girlies. Because it's like, we're not happy until we have three beverages at once. It's true. Ugh. So anyway. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. I don't even know <laughs> if I'm going to have Roman leave that in. But yeah. There we go. It's just, 
I do like the idea of drinking a lot of water and sometimes water, as much as I like it, it's like, this is boring. Yeah. I need excitement in my life. I'm like, I'll just stick with liquid IV. It's, oh, see that I like. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I don't know who I was trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be fun. Whatever. Well, I don't know. I feel like the people that can handle the sonic things, I'm like, they probably have iron stomachs. They're... Yeah. I do not. I do not. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, I believe it is my turn. You to go are first going this first week. this week. I am nervous and I'm excited. I don't know why I'm nervous. I mean, I guess it's only our third recording. But... Yeah, but still. But this. You're a pro at this by now. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this is a topic that I have been interested in. In a long time. In a long time. For a long For time. For a long time. There we go. You love it long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Roman, cut that out. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Ugh. We should also say we're recording kind of late, so we're a little punchy. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I've been interested in this case for a long yes. time. And I've listened to a lot of different podcasts about it. So I wanted to do it. And it is The Disappearance of Elisa Lamb. Oh, man. I know. This is going to be good in a horrifying way. I know. It's the fact that you're doing it because I feel like you have always been interested in it and you're going to treat it respectfully. And I feel like we've always had really good discussions about it. So it's this is going to be a... Yeah, a it's, one. it's a very sad one, but it's also yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my sources for uh, this topic were uh, an article on All Things Interesting, um, an article on Investigation Discovery by Aaron Rasmussen, and then uh, a podcast that I really like called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know Podcast, which sounds like it would be a conspiracy theory podcast, but it's not really. Yeah, I've listened to them before, too, and they're yeah. great. I, I think... They are very intelligent the yeah. way they bring about the topic. And they're also very respectful about uh, this case as well. Oh, perfect. So let's jump into the case. So on January 26, 2013, Elisa Lamb arrived in L.A. Elisa was a student of the University of British Columbia visiting the U.S. Her plan was to travel all throughout California, and she called it her West Coast tour. And it was a solo trip, but during her travels, she regularly updated her travel blog and checked in with her parents each day just so people could know where she was and know that she was safe. So while, uh, while in L.A., Elisa was staying at the Cecil Hotel, mm -hmm. and this is an infamous hotel that any true crime fan knows yeah. about. It's a hotel on Skid Row that has been host to serial killers, including... Richard Ramirez, when he was active, uh, there's been many suicides there, and just overall a lot of criminal activity. So it's already bad for a young woman traveling alone yeah. to be in this place. Bad vibes. I've always wondered about the suicides. Is it people that go there and they're um, in a place in life where they're like, this is my plan? Or is it because just being there depressed them further and I they know. were like I gotta get out of here or yeah the one of the things that they talked about on um stuff they don't want you to know is that like even if you don't believe which I don't in places being haunted there are just places that have bad vibes yes, I agree and I think if you're in a place like that long enough then it kind of starts to rub off on you yeah yeah because yeah. we're very influenced we are influenceable is we're very uh it is now. It is now. <laughs> yeah, and I think, um, isn't Cecil Hotel, I mean, the building is still standing, mm -hmm. but they've changed it because they wanted to give it a, like a, yeah, um, like a fresh, a glow up. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we have also talked about how we've always wanted to go there. We have, yes. And um, not stay there. Not stay there. I like, they were like, it has really bad vibes. So when are we going? <laughs> <laughs> no, we just want to visit it. We do. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully see it, hopefully it's a more well kept now. yeah I mean, yeah i mean it's a good building it is <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway elisa's parents didn't hear from her on january 31st 
and this was very unusual for her, so they began to worry, and they contacted the Los Angeles Police Department. And a couple weeks had passed since anyone had heard from Elisa, and then the hotel began to receive complaints about water pressure, as well as the water being discolored and foul-tasting from several of the people staying there. So, worker Santiago Lopez went to the roof and scaled the ladder attached to one of the four water towers. When he got to the top, uh, the hatch on the water tower uh, was open, and he discovered the nude body of Elisa Lamb floating face up. Mm -hmm. She was found with her clothes floating next to her, and there was no sign of sexual assault or foul play, or later the coroner even said it didn't look like it was a suicide, Mm -hmm. so it was ruled an accidental drowning. The question is, how did this happen? The only evidence was footage from the day that Elisa disappeared. And this is very famous footage. If you are all familiar with this case and you're able to see it on YouTube, nothing happens in the video. So it's not anything disturbing other than she looks like she either is scared or not in her right mind. Yeah, I always thought it's not disturbing, but knowing it's the last time you see her alive. Yeah. And... Um, some people have analyzed it like it looks like she's either like talking to somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Or talk maybe talking to herself. I think there's a part of it that's a little bit maybe it's just sad. Yeah, that it's like this is it. Yeah, and uh, getting into that footage now. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. <laughs> you're like Sh- stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so in the footage, she steps in and out of the elevator, uh, poking her head out toward the hotel hallways. And she looks out another few times before exiting the elevator, and she... Oh, I'm so sorry. You know what? I'm going to have Roman edit that part. Roman! (laughs) So the footage shows her stepping into the elevator, and then she pushes all the buttons, so then the doors are open. And she steps in and out of the elevator a few times, poking her head out towards the hotel hallways. She looks out another few times before exiting the elevator... And during this time, she's seen moving her hands in random gestures. And like you said, it at times appears like she is talking to herself or talking to someone else. So people have wondered if maybe she was being followed by someone and she was trying to get people's attention or if she was having some sort of episode and was just talking to herself. And Elisa had previously been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and was on medication for it. And the coroner believes that this footage and her getting into the water tower seemingly of her own volition were part of a manic episode and that her death was just a tragic accident. But of course, with any true crime story, Mm. there are other theories as to what happened. So one is, of course, people wonder about foul play. Many people doubted that she would be able to get up to the roof and climb the water tower on her own because it was supposed to the door to the roof was supposed to be locked but from everything we know about the hotel at the time it would not be surprising if some of the staff didn't lock up like they were supposed to right and it wouldn't have been hard for her to climb to the actual water tower because there was a 10 foot ladder that would help her get up but some noted that the fact that the lid of the water tower was between 30 to 50 pounds it might have been difficult for petite little Elisa to lift because she was a petite woman. And then some, of course, thought that something supernatural was at play due to the hotel's violent history and the superstitions around Mm -hmm. that. But one particularly interesting and out-there theory was that her death was somehow linked to playing the elevator game. Have you heard of the elevator game? Yeah, um... I think so, but I'm really excited that you're going to tell me right now. Yes, I am. (laughs) So the game is said to take you to a different plane of existence that looks similar to yours. You emerge and everything is the same, but all the lights are off and you can see a red cross in the distance. Why it's a red cross, I don't know why. Red cross as in like um, the institution? (laughs) Not the institution. (laughs) I don't know. In my mind, I'm like... it's a very Stanley Kubrick type of imagery of ah. just like a glowing red cross. Okay, yeah, I I see it. I mean, I don't I don't see it right now. <laughs> We're not. I, <laughs> it is not in the room with I'm us. Like, 
<laughs> I'm like, blink twice if you are in a different dimension. Do you see Red Cross? Well, uh, if you manage to reach this plane, returning to your world would be difficult. And if you were actually on that plane, I would not be right here because you would be the only living thing on that plane of existence. How do we know that it exists? Um... I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> I am going to get into, <laughs> it's like the sort, like when they're, um, like on Reddit or whatever, they're like <laughs> source, trust me, bro. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and that's pretty much what I'm going to say right now. Trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. Here are the rules for the game. So only one person can play at a time. It has to be performed in a building at least 10 stories high with an elevator. You enter the elevator on the first floor by yourself. If anyone else enters with you, you cannot continue. You press the button for the fourth floor. When it reaches the fourth floor, stay inside and press the button for the second floor. Stay in when you reach the second floor and press the button for the sixth floor. Don't get out. Go back to the second floor. Once you're back at the second floor, press the button for the tenth floor. And if you hear anything calling to you on the second floor, don't answer. Once you get to the 10th floor, press the button for the 5th floor. When you get to the 5th floor, a woman will enter and try to talk to you. Don't speak to her. Don't look at her. Press the button for the 1st floor. If the ritual worked, you will start going up to the 10th floor instead of to the 1st floor. When you reach the 10th floor, you can stay inside or exit the elevator. The only way to know that you've traveled to the other world for sure is that you'll be the only living thing there. Oh my gosh. First of all... There are so many numbers. Right. I'm, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm bad at math. Am I on the fifth floor? I don't remember. And I know. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how you would do this without someone noticing. Because personally, I would have to write this all down. Oh, yeah. To remember any of it. And then what if like someone just gets into the elevator and you're like, no, don't talk to me. <laughs> like You're the like, one. Man, <laughs> this girl's a real jerk. I know. <laughs> She's like, hey, can I get directions? And you're like. I, I can't look at you. <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was a very fascinating... Uh, also, this is very scary sounding. It is very scary. It's like, mom, pick me up, I'm scared it, scenarios. <laughs> it kind of reminds me, it's like reminding me of an episode of Welcome to Night Vale or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Or the Twilight Zone. Or the Twilight Zone, definitely. OG. Oh, the OG. So, although urban legends like this are very interesting to discuss and think about, it is most likely that Elisa did, in fact, accidentally drown. Only Elisa truly knows what her mental state was at the time and the severity of her mental illness. No matter what you choose to believe, it's a tragedy that such a young woman with her whole life ahead of her had her life cut short. And that is the sad story of the disappearance and mysterious death of Elisa Lamb. Oh, man. This one always gets to me because it's like, we understand how mental illness can really affect mm -hmm. your day-to-day -day life. And I mean, sometimes you can just be in a place where you're like, I'm not doing well. You're alone. Mm -hmm. You're in a different country. Um, I mean, who knows? She might have been scared. She was young and impressionable. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, I, I don't know, the part of her clothes being off I always imagined that she took them off to like swim mm -hmm. or or I don't even know like who would take them off of her I don't know yeah especially like the coroner said there was no evidence of sexual assault mm -hmm. I mean of course I always have Paul holes in the back of my mind you know he always says there doesn't have to be a sexual assault for there to be a sexual gratification right. for someone who is killing yes so which is an unfortunate truth it is unfortunate truth but mm. i also always have to remember that i mean i don't know why i have to remember that i'm not <laughs> you're like every day you're like hey <laughs> gratification i don't know <laughs> you're like people are bad I don't i'm like just telling people yeah. do you know do you know that there doesn't have to be a sexual assault. Yeah. Well, you, and she was in the water for so long because people were starting to, to taste. I know. Which is, it's so the terrible. thought alone is like, I feel bad for those people, but I also feel devastated for her family, that mm -hmm. whole idea. But 
could DNA or or anything that would prove sexual assault mm-hmm. have been, I guess, like, like washed degraded? away yeah. or degraded. So I don't know. I don't know. But also, who in their right mind is drinking California tap water anyway? That is a real thing because I grew up going to San Diego to visit my grandparents mm-hmm. and everyone had Coligan water. Like, if you were going to drink the tap water, <laughs> they would slap the cup out of your hand. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Because I remember even, like, one time being like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I got it out of the tap, and I was, like, sniffing it. I'm like, what happened? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, you have to boil it if you want to drink it. And this is, I mean, this is a state in the United States. They're like, do not drink this water. Yeah. Even the filtered water. Because, like, whenever we would go to Disneyland, mm. like, when we first started going, I would just ask for water like at one of the restaurants and I'm like, this is the worst it tasting is water the worst. ever. And I'm like, that's how they get you to spend so much money on bottled water. Cause they know the water's trash. I mean, even if the water <laughs> is okay to drink, cause it's like, yeah. clearly it's safe to drink. It tastes weird. It tastes weird because they have like, there are, I mean, who knows how many processes it had to go through mm-hmm. and weird things had to be added, which I mean, like they probably have like fluoride in it. So yeah. So good teeth maybe, but that's our PSA. Don't drink California water or yeah. hotel water. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't drink hotel water. No. Oh man. I mean, I guess in a way they you felt- we have talked about water a lot. We have. So- <laughs> and you know what? My story is a lot of water in it. <laughs> Not to be disrespectful to Elisa Lamb. It's just funny. I'm like, oh my. I know. Like I I am not trying to make light of this story Mm-mm. at all but truly when i read that they were drinking the water and they're like oh it tastes funny i'm like i don't know i don't know if that i would notice anything different i'd be like oh it's just california yeah water. i know but i mean i guess you know there's californians listening are like hey and then they're like we know <laughs> they're like that's why we have our filter uh-huh that's why Culligan will be forever in business yeah um but i do remember when I would, I mean, like at my grandparents' house, I would brush my teeth mm. with tap water. You know what? I think that is what there was like a couple interviewed mm. that um, they were one of the ones that had complained to the staff. And I think I remember them saying it was when they're brushing their teeth. Yeah. So you're right. Which is the worst time because you're like, I'm wanting my mouth to be clean. Mm-hmm. Why is this water bumming my mouth out so yeah. bad? <laughs> yeah. And they were, oh, oh gosh. I remember they were like tourists from another country. And I'm like, what a horrible experience to like go to a hotel and then you find out why the water tastes bad and then there's like this tragic Mm. murder of this young girl while you're there yeah that would be traumatic and they have not visited since (laughs) they went they went back and they're like never again (laughs) they're like no california you had your chance you ruined it we we like you california Uh, yeah well yeah we do i mean like come on we love you so much but uh we just don't like your water. <laughs> um, or your traffic. Come on. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs> I just like started sounding like a stand-up person. I know. Um, I remember, so we were, we have talked about the CISA Hotel mm-hmm. um, documentary, how it's not great. But one thing it did remind me of, this was a time when Tumblr was big. Mm-hmm. Elisa was a Tumblr girl. Yes, she was. And I'm thinking, think of all the weird stuff that has come out of Tumblr to this day. Yeah. <laughs> but really back in like what, what year was it again? 2013. 20, I was going to say, like 2010 to 2013 was like Tumblr heyday, I think. Oh yeah, we were in the trenches. Oh yeah, we were both there. <laughs> I won't talk about what I've done. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't do anything weird. I'm just like... I, I, it sounds like you killed a man. I know. I really just, like, reblogged a lot of pictures of Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. We, I, mean, I was a different person then. <laughs> 2013 but, Tumblr. Uh, it was a time to be alive. It was. But um, it makes me wonder if the elevator game was something that was talked about on there. Because oh. that was also, like, during, like, the mm-hmm. Slender Man era. Mm-hmm. Or creepy pasta. Yeah. That really became a thing and a lot of people believed creepy pastas they're not real. Mm-hmm. But I mean it makes you wonder if if she was in a psychotic episode and she read this, she's like, "Oh, that's something I could do." Mm-hmm. It just makes you think, "Oh, the internet." Yeah. I remember um another thing they talked about on the podcast was that um 
her, I think it was her Tumblr account, that it was like a month after she had been found, uh, there was a picture that had just like been posted on her Tumblr account. And they're oh. theorizing as like how that happened. Did um, someone have, must have had access to her. Yeah. But it was like account. such a random picture. It was like a picture of a light bulb, but like inside the light bulb, there was like this little snowy landscape and Ooh, like a snow globe, kind of like a snow globe mm. in a light bulb. Oh, interesting. But I was like, either she scheduled that to be posted at a certain time. Cause you can do that. If I remember my Tumblr correctly, uh-huh. you could schedule posts. Yeah. Cause it was a queue. I know too much about Tumblr. Please, <laughs> please don't think of me as a Tumblr. I mean, we are at that age. Yeah. I mean, I'm a lot older than you, but we we're, but we were both, both in the, yeah. um, the era. So yeah, we're both millennials. We are. And, but yeah, I think it, I mean, that could have been a scheduled post, but mm-hmm. either way, that is actually kind of unnerving mm-hmm. that that would happen. Yeah. That would make me worry even more if I was her family. I, me too. Like, who has access to this? If anyone does. Yeah. I don't like that even to this day. I mean, that's been 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't have any more evidence. I know. And the family also tried to sue for negligence uh, of the hotel, but the judge dismissed it because it was like such an extraordinary circumstance. Mm. Like if you were thinking of someone in their right state of mind, you would never think, oh, someone's going to go up to the roof and climb into the water tower. Mm-hmm. So it was dismissed, but... I, I feel bad for the family because yeah, I'm too. sure, you know, they still blame the hotel, oh, even yeah. though it doesn't sound like it was their fault. Right. That's just a tragedy. Mm-hmm. And I really hope someday, like, more evidence comes to light. Or I hope yeah. someone's not giving up on that case. Because, you know, I mean, Los Angeles, mm-hmm. they have their fair share of things happening where they might have to put their manpower elsewhere but you're like please don't give up on these cold cases yeah and even if like it is that just she died accidentally like i'm sure the family would like to know like what the last hours of her life were so anyway that was very good that's my sad case Uh, yeah (laughs) that's a that was really good and i i appreciate learning about the elevator game Mm mm-hmm um, so when are we going to do this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm like, this is too weird. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we just looks so dumb. <laughs> the, the Shiloh Inn. And, I don't know. I'm just random. Like, what hotel? <laughs> what? It has to be 10 stories, Drew. Where is even a 10 story building that we could go to? I don't know. We'll have to We have to do this. Trip. We need to go to the Empire State Building. <laughs> the ultimate elevator game. But you would never be able to get it to yourself. That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. I We're forgot like, about that part. You can't get on this elevator. I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> so many angry tourists. Yeah. Um, but, oh, well. That was, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Do you want to take a break? Before? Yes. Let's take a break and we will be back for more. So. Um, with your story, I'm going to take a hard left, (laughs) I guess, depending on where you're standing. Anyway, I'm going straight to the Atlantic Ocean. (laughs) (laughs) We're just heading straight over there. And I'm going to tell you, Olivia, about the Bermuda Triangle. I'm so excited. Eight-year-old me would be very excited about this. Uh, current me is also excited about this. (laughs) This is one of those things you learn when you're eight and you're like... What is happening to this world? Why aren't we doing something about this? Kind of like <laughs> right. um, quicksand where you're like, oh my gosh. And then you become an adult and you're like, oh, there's worse things out there. Yeah. When you're a kid, you're like, well, obviously my biggest problems are the Bermuda Triangle and quicksand. Uh-huh. Those are my priorities. Yeah. And then like, so you find out about it and you go to, you go home after school and then you're like trying to tell your mom everything you've learned about the Bermuda Triangle. And she's like, please just let me cook dinner. <laughs> Or I'm balancing my checkbook. (laughs) So anyway, we're going to talk about this and why, and why is it the way it is? (laughs) So my sources for, um, what I wrote resources. (laughs) No, my sources for Bermuda Triangle 
are um, an article by Kim Dismott Robinson called Bermuda Triangle Demystified, mm -hmm. um, Encyclopedia Britannica, and um, our one true love, Wikipedia. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, so the Bermuda Triangle. This is one of those places in the world, in our modern world, I guess, that still have like this aura of mystery mm -hmm. of like, I mean, it still exists. It's on our globe, um, but it's kind of like, what is actually happening over there? And this is a section of the North Atlantic Ocean off the southeastern coast of North America, so off of the Florida coast. Um, and this is an area where at least... 50 ships and 20 airplanes are have said to mysteriously disappear. Oh my God. Yeah. This area um, have boundaries that are not really universally agreed upon, but the vague triangular shape we're going to make in our brain <laughs> <laughs> is so the lower point will be Florida, the panhandle, I guess like Miami. Mm -hmm. um, and then up north, which... I like geography. That's one of my favorite subjects in school. I did not, in my brain, I did not remember that Bermuda is north of Florida. And I always think of the Caribbean islands as being south of the Florida Keys. Like, in my head, I'm like, oh, they're all down there. No. <laughs> See, I, I don't have really any concept of north, south, east, mm. east, west. I, you know, I have a really bad sense of direction. Oh, I'm like, I can't do left or right to save my life, so. I can do that, so together. Together, we will get out of Somewhere. whatever we're in. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, maybe not the Bermuda Triangle, but. Probably not. <laughs> but were you going to say that you knew where Bermuda was? No. Oh, I was <laughs> like, we're, I'm just she's saying, so smart. I'm still impressed. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I don't know any of that. Well, so. I guess, I mean, if you look at the map. Um, which let me look it up really quick because boy, will I look silly if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, we'll just cut all of that. <laughs> yeah. Bermuda, which man, I would, let's go to Bermuda. All mm -hmm. of these places I talk about when I would look them up, I would be like, yeah, I'm let's, I'm down anytime you want to go. So yeah, Bermuda is kind of just really out there. It's surrounded by so much empty water. And it is uh, parallel to South Carolina, oh, which I did not even realize, that's interesting. right? But it's so far from South Carolina. So mm -hmm. it's like you're thinking, oh, it's, you know, you can see it. You can't. But like if you just drew a line, you would just head straight into it. And so that's the tip of the top. The, nope. The that tip is of the, the, the tip of our triangle is mm -hmm. Bermuda. Um, so we have Miami, Bermuda, and then the lower... Um, left nope right sink dang it <laughs> point would be greater antilles or puerto rico so we have our little triangle um what's really weird is if you look it up sometimes people think that 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 point could actually be chesapeake bay hmm, okay. or even um i read that some people will even stretch this triangle to the irish sea oh which it's like is that even a triangle shape anymore? I guess it is, but it's just like a really skinny head oh my triangle. I, we have to draw this out. We'll yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so that's not the Bermuda Triangle anymore. That's the Irish Sea Triangle. What's or, going on in the Irish Sea? <laughs> Isosceles. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so let's just stick with our regular triangle that we know. Yeah. Um, this is sometimes called the Devil's Triangle, mm -hmm. the Limbo of the Lost. The Twilight Zone, which I mean, like, which came first, that or the TV show, you wonder, um, or the Hoodoo Sea. Well, such an interesting thing. I know. Um, and then, so this is an area that covers 500,000 square miles of Atlantic Ocean, which, real talk, did you know that there is a garbage patch floating in the ocean, which... Which, I mean, like, yes, we do. Yeah. I'm answering that for you. You know that. I do know that. <laughs> yeah. Because we talked about it before. 
Um, so this is actually in the Pacific, but I think we looked it up and there's like garbage patches all over the world, which is really what sad. Was it like the five main garbage patches? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, our world is falling apart and, <laughs> and but yeah, it's all trash. It's all trash. The ocean is trash. Um, the, <laughs> so the Bermuda Triangle is 500,000 square miles. This garbage patch is two times the size no. of the Bermuda Triangle. I hate that. Yes. Which then I was thinking about it. Like, I haven't really seen pictures. I think it would bum me out too much to see it. But yeah. is this structurally sound? Could this actually become a new land? Could we create Garbage Patch Island? Is that like how Long Island happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. People on Long Island are like, why I oughta? If, if that's not true, I'm sorry. I Long know. Island. I'm sure there, I mean, I know that are places that have like dump sites that have become places. Yeah. But, um, like it's not an insult. I'm it's no, just, it's just, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, isn't that how Hawaii happened? And I'm like, no, wait, no, that was a volcano. <laughs> no. This is like a trash volcano. <laughs> oh, I, I'm aware that Hawaii is volcano. No, I, know. I don't know why I thought that. Uh, Hawaii is like, we are ac actually beautiful and stunning and get your garbage away I'm from like, me. I know Hawaii. I never want to leave you. Oh no. Let's go there. Okay. Okay. Um, but what's so funny is like, okay, so this, this giant garbage patch, I was thinking about it. Like, could we go there? Could we create our own system of government? Mm -hmm. Um, but you've got to know there's like probably seagulls on it just taking over. Oops. There's seagulls have their own government. Yeah. There's probably a king seagull <laughs> as we speak. Oh, no. Like a king rat. Oh. No. Ew. <laughs> No, <laughs> maybe it's just a big seagull with a crown made out of French Aww. fries. Oh, that's kind of cute. That's actually so cute. But anyway, he would probably eat it first. Yeah, I realize this is really sad. I wasn't trying to bum you out that our um, world is dying and uh, when will the garbage patch end? Maybe never. Maybe we'll all be a garbage patch one day. But anyway, back to the more fun thing, the Bermuda Triangle. So... um. The very first time this name, Bermuda Triangle, had been christened was actually not that long ago. It was in 1964. And an article by Vincent Gaddis, he wrote it for Argosy Magazine, and it was called The Deadly Bermuda Triangle. So he kind of coined it. Mm -hmm. But before the myth of this triangle became popular, Bermuda itself, this island nation that I talked about it's if you look at it on the map it really looks very lonely it's really in this big vast stretch of ocean that looks like wow I mean you are really out there <laughs> <laughs> are you okay yeah they're having a good time over there they're like leave us alone yeah please look at pictures and wish you were with us because we are great um but long ago it had a reputation for being an enchanted island. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. In fact, for many years, it was nicknamed the Devil's Island or Devil's Islands. Because, I mean, there it has more than just one island. It has, like, a few happening. I think there's, like, two. I don't know. Bermuda's going to be so mad at me for messing this up. Um, sorry, Bermuda. Listeners. Sorry, Bermuda. <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> thank you for listening, and we're really sorry. Um, so early sea travelers were... Um, when they would come close to this island, they were frightened by the calls of the cow birds and the squeals of wild pigs that they could be heard <laughs> on shore. Which, I mean, that sounds really cute. But if you didn't know what a, that was, that would actually be scary. Yeah, it kind of just sounds like someone screaming. Screaming, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, oof, I would not. They're like, get away from here. And meanwhile, it's just like these cute little pigs running around. The pigs are like, our plan works. <laughs> our plan work. get, get away from here. Um, so perhaps the most fascinating things about these tales that were told by sailors were these treacherous reefs that were surrounding the island. And so this island had such a mystical reputation. It was even immortalized in Shakespeare's The Tempest, oh. which that was the very first um play i saw at a sh like a shakespeare the shakespeare festival which was actually last october mm -hmm. i saw the tempest and it was amazing and um i went with a friend who knows so much about shakespeare and i know 
so little about Shakespeare. But what I thought was funny and sad is that the main island dweller that they see, um, oh my gosh, Roman, I'm so sorry. His name was <laughs> Cal- Caliban. I'm going to be like Culligan Water. No, his name was <laughs> Caliban and he was a monster. And that's oh. what was sad is like, they basically were like, this island is full of creepy people and it's mm-hmm. just It's just Caliban. Um, I am so sorry to interrupt, but I also, The Tempest was the first (gasps) play I saw. What? We're your samers. But it was put on by children in Corvallis. That actually sounds great. I know. I was like, I'm in second grade. I, one of my classmates is acting in this play, The Tempest. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Which, I mean, that has a, adult themes in it. <laughs> no, I don't know. How yeah. Because Caliban is once uh, accused of um, sexual assault. Mm-hmm. So just throwing that out there, uh, second graders, <laughs> what are you doing? They're like, we don't know. We don't know, actually. Um, so in The Tempest, the this mysterious island is called the still vexed Bermuths, which it's almost like Bermuths. Is that where the term Bermuda came from? Or is it just like a play on the word Bermuda? Probably not. I should have looked that up. I'm really (laughs) sorry. (laughs) I just thought that was so interesting because I mean, that was so long ago, Mm -hmm. but of course people are traveling the ocean and Bermuda is in between. Like if you're coming down, it's in between coming from England going to like the Carolinas or something like that, or mm-hmm. that part of the world. And so you're going to run into it and it might seem like, you know, this place is magical. So who knows? Um, so the earliest origin of this myth can be stretched far back as Columbus. And I wrote Columbus also known as the worst person ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> he noted in his log book, of haywire compasses, seeing strange lights, and even bursts of flame falling into the sea. Oh. Columbus, as well as other um, seamen after him, also encountered a harrowing stretch of ocean known as the Sargasso Sea, which is an area of the ocean between Bermuda and the Caribbean, which is below Bermuda, known for its windless waters that are actually the result of ocean currents sweeping through the North Atlantic. They thought it was paranormal activity. It actually was just, (laughs) it's just wind. (laughs) It's just, but there was, there was no wind. That was the part that was creepy to them. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I like my brain misinterpreted what you said. (laughs) You're like, yeah, that's how they're like, that's how wind works. I'm like, this is how the wind is not working. So, um, for example, this area is really known for, um, ships and aircraft going missing Mm -hmm. but everything kind of disappears without a trace i mean yeah things will will show up but there's usually no wreckage no bodies like it's just they're gone and that's what's creepy about this area is this windless calm water it's like there's no reason to even send a distress signal Mm -hmm. and then they're gone that's creepy yeah so, for example, aircraft will report to towers, like they're in communication, and then they'll vanish. Mm-hmm. Rescue missions are said to have vanished while even looking for the ones that have just vanished. Oh, no. Yeah. And um, past wreckage is usually not found, which is uh, creepy. creepy. But many attribute it to supernatural. Actually, it's geophysical and environmental factors. And the fact that the ocean is constantly moving so it's mm-hmm. like stuff will be one way and then it just like whoop, go somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> oh man i wish people could see your hand gestures <laughs> the ocean is like Woo. okay so this is going to be there's a lot of different stories that i could talk about i'm going to talk about like one in particular okay and this is called uh flight 19 Um, And this is a designation of a group of five Avenger torpedo bombers that disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle on December 5th, 1945. Okay. So they lost contact with the United States Navy 
um, during a navigation training flight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, and they were, I believe that they were going south, but they did not end up going south. There were 14 airmen on this flight that were lost, um, as well as the 13 crew members of the flying boat that was launched to search for the first crew that went missing. Oh, no. So 27 people missing. A report by Navy investigators conclude that the flight leader, Charles C. Taylor, mistook small islands offshore for the Florida Keys because he was hoping he was going south. Mm -hmm. um, but his compass stopped working. So the flight heading over, they went into open sea instead of land. Oh, no. Yeah. And the report was later amended by the Navy to read that the real cause was unknown because they wanted to avoid blaming Charles Taylor for the loss of five aircraft and mm -hmm. the 15 men in his charge. Um, so the flight that went after them, they concluded that perhaps it exploded midair, but they really don't know. That mm -hmm. was just their best guess. So... Charles Taylor is experiencing a compass error. He thought he was near Bahamas or the Key West, and he wasn't even sure what direction he was facing in the open water, which is actually really scary. Um, the control tower informed him that he is not even near Key West because the wind is not blowing that way. But some of the crew men uh, with him were saying, oh, my compass is working, so he based his next route on their compass mm, okay. but he panicked so he was he ended up going the right direction he panicked they turned around and the best guess the navy has is that they ran out of fuel and just crashed into the ocean oh which is like that's terrible so terrible i couldn't even imagine the panic of like i'm not seeing land i have 14 men with me what do i do yeah and then your plane just runs yeah out of gas and and there you go so the wreckage has never been found. This is 1945. In 1986, there was <laughs> Bermuda doing it. That was creepy. All of a sudden, Bermuda just like Google Earth just zoomed in on Bermuda. Bermuda's like, are you talking about me? Are you talking about me? I'm just going to close that and yeah, just put that creepy. away. <laughs> okay, so in 1986, um, the wreckage of an Avenger was found off the coast of Florida during a search for the Space Shuttle Challenger. And an aviation archaeologist raised this wreck from the ocean floor in 1990. So they didn't even pick it up in 1986. They did it four years later, and it was not one of the missing planes. Oh, sad. Yeah. Um, a different wrecked plane was found in 1991 by a treasure hunter. His name was Graham Hawks, and he found it off the coast of Florida but um, eventually it was concluded to be a wrecked plane from 1943, which was two years prior, which I'm like, this place is just full of wreckage, unfortunately. But also I love that there's just like a treasure hunter that's like, I bet there's a bunch of stuff I could find here. Right? What a cool job. He's like, my profession is actually treasure hunter. <laughs> In March 2012, <laughs> uh, Graham Hawks was reported saying that it suited him, his investors, and the Pentagon, yes, that Pentagon, <laughs> to make this story go away because it was expensive and time-consuming. But uh, there was never any conclusive evidence. I also wrote in here, please don't come for me, Pentagon. I'm just, I'm just, just covering your, pieces. I'm just like, I'm writing what I'm reading. Yeah. Anyway. So still, I mean, the last time it was like discussed was in 2015. It was still reported that no wreckage had been found. Um, and this is because a lot of people don't want the simple answer of human error or a compass failing. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of times people will attribute something mysterious to these disappearances especially this particular one flight 19 in fact it was featured in the 1977 science fiction film close encounters of the third kind such a good movie such a good movie um in the film's opening the aircraft are discovered in the sonoran desert in pristine condition with 
full fuel tanks, which I did not remember that mm-hmm. part. Um, and then at the film's ending, the crew of Flight 19 returns to Earth in the alien mothership. Uh, and they're the same age as their disappearance, which it's like, oh, yeah. So, I mean, people really knew about this mm-hmm. Flight 19. Spielberg's like, I did my research. Yeah, he, he's really good at his research, I can tell you that. Okay, so one hypothesis for this disappearance is that so pilots fail to account for um, the agonic line, which is a line where there's no need to compensate for a magnetic compass variation. And it's like it's there are parts of the Earth where your compass is just going to go wonky. Mm-hmm. And um, so as they approach the Bermuda Triangle, there's a navigational error and their compass is not working. Um, so another popular theory is that the missing vessels were felled by a so-called rogue wave, mm-hmm. which sounds a little made up, but actually it's a real thing. It's a massive wave that can reach up to 100 feet in the air. So if it's a, a plane that's doing a training mission, they're not going to be that high up. Mm-hmm. Um and it's powerful enough to destroy any evidence of a ship or an airplane. Well, that's terrifying. Yeah. And the Bermuda Triangle is located, obviously, in an area of the Atlantic Ocean that is known for hurricanes. It's like, mm, it is yes. plagued constantly with storms. And it's almost like, it's like a hurricane alley. It's mm-hmm. just, the area is just, yeah, it's scary. So according to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they said, quote, there is no evidence that mysterious disappearances occur with any greater frequency in the Bermuda Triangle than any other large, well-traveled area of the ocean, end quote. So boaters and flyers, they continue to venture through this triangle without event. I mean, people go through it all the time. Yeah. And the ocean is terrifyingly still untouched. And so much of it is actually, um, what's the word? I don't know. What, when you're exploring? Explored. <laughs> <laughs> so much of it is unexplored. Mm-hmm. I think there's like the, the statistic of how much space from, you know, outside of Earth has been explored versus the ocean. Mm-hmm. The ocean is on Earth and the ocean is still like, you don't know me. Mm-hmm. I'm crazy. The ocean <laughs> is beautiful but terrifying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She is a cruel mistress. She is. Um, so another scientific theory suggests large deposits of methane gas spewing up from the ocean floor. And this happens within the triangle's borders. These huge eruptions of methane bubbles push water away from a ship, which causes it to sink. It's highly flammable, so it can rise into the air, igniting a plane's engine, causing it to explode, and then just, it's gone. And, um, yes, and I don't know if you're thinking the same thing I was thinking when I was reading this, but yes, there was an article I saw um, that was titled, Ocean Farts. (laughs) 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 The truth behind the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, that's literally what it is. Yeah. And it's a real thing. And for example, this has been tested. Laboratory experiments carried out in Australia have proven that bubbles can indeed sink a scale model ship by decreasing the density of the water. And then any wreckage consequently um, would rise to the the surface and then just be rapidly dispersed by a Gulf Stream. So it's just kind of like gone and then... Goodbye. Goodbye. (laughs) And it also has been hypothesized that there is um, methane eruptions in addition to the gas. So they're sometimes called mud volcanoes, which I'm like, okay. Uh, I know where this is going. (laughs) The ocean has the runs. Yeah, it's like, never trust a methane bubble. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know where it's going to... Yeah. Anyway... I'm like, the ocean is just like us. (laughs) It also can't drink ocean water from Sonic. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. no. Anyway, so these mud volcanoes produce um, frothy water that uh, 
reduce the buoyancy in the water. So it's like a ship can literally just go down without a warning. Wow. Which is actually really scary. It is really scary. Because it just be like. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like the, the, the consistency or the chem, like who knows what. I'm not a scientist, but, <laughs> but the water is just like, goodbye. Um, so <laughs> last but not least. So when Googling the Bermuda Triangle, um, you will see that it has, uh, you can leave a review for it. <laughs> like it's on Google. It's a Google review. It has one single star, single star. It has one single five-star review. Someone out there left a five-star review for the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, my gosh. All it says is dangerous location. <laughs> <laughs> I like that it's like dangerous dangerous location, five stars. Five stars would go again. <laughs> would go again. <laughs> I'm like, whoever that guy was, I like him. So, all in all... This legend of the Bermuda Triangle is pretty much a manufactured mystery. It's an area that has been journeyed through so many times, but it's just like the earth is crazy and you are seeing it happen. Yep. This is, it's just proof of that. Um, writers have either purposely or unknowingly made uh, use of these misconceptions, creating, you know, fictitious lies, faulty reasoning, lots of sensationalism. And of course, it's just fun to imagine that it could be something other than methane gas. <laughs> I mean, we all want that. So last but not least, um, I will end it with a 2013 study, the Worldwide Fund for Nature. They identified the world's 10 most dangerous waters for shipping. The Bermuda Triangle wasn't even on it. Wow. Yeah. So that kind of gives you an idea of the ocean. Do not mess with it. Rio Triangle's like, please stop slandering me. Please, yeah, like I'm, I'm good, um, and that is it. That is the story of the mysterious Bermuda Triangle. That was so good. I learned so much that I didn't know. Yes, me too. When I was doing the research, I was like, the ocean is crazy. <laughs> also, I I fully understand now why, like all these folk tales and stories came about from like sailors when uh sailing was a lot more common because mm -hmm. i mean your ship just gets like sucked down by the ocean like yeah. of course you'd be like oh it's a sea monster oh yeah you think or oh. it's or it's the lost city of atlantis yeah drawing me down not ocean farts not ocean farts. <laughs> because it's like yeah back then so much of the ocean was um undocumented mm -hmm. or not mapped out they, I mean, stuff happens today where people will go missing and we're like, what happened to them? Like the Malaysian flight. Mm -hmm. And that happened 500 years ago. Granted, they didn't have airplanes back then. <laughs> but but the was, equivalent. The yeah. equivalent. It's like, oh, they would be like, that was the devil. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> the devil's in the ocean. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you just, there's so much out there that is, it actually was something that made something disappear. But it was not anything mythical. It was mm -hmm. just... People just didn't understand. They didn't understand. Yeah. And people still don't. I still don't. No. But it is a crazy place. I wouldn't mind going there. I was telling my mom about it, and she's like, well, you're not going to go there, are you? We're like, can't guarantee it. I know. Like, <laughs> well, I was like, there's nothing wrong with it. And she's like, but it's dangerous. And I'm like, you know what? What I've learned, the ocean is dangerous. Don't mm -hmm. go near the ocean. The ocean will mess you up. Also, but we love it. I think we should just like add pretty much every topic we do. It's like our grand podcast road trip that we're planning. Oh yeah, or that would be a boat trip. A boat but... trip. It'll be all forms of <laughs> planes, trains. Yeah, downhill. yeah, literally. Yeah. Like we're gonna do our own um, murder on the Orient Express. Mm -hmm. Sands murder. Yes. <laughs> We'll just be, we hope. We hope. We'll just be like, well, I'll be Poirot. Mm -hmm. And um, I, mean, I would love to be Poirot. Right? Oh, we'd have the cutest mustaches. I know. We'd be so amazing being Belgian. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. David Suchet, though. David not, Suchet. Not a Brana. Kenneth Brana. If you're listening, Kenneth Brana, we still love you. But come on. But also, we'll never forget what you did to Emma Thompson. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Brana, if you're and listening, I'll never forgive. Yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Brana, if you're listening, um, we're really sorry about, but we'll never forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> yeah. But she's, we got to protect Emma Thompson. So yeah, she's the best. She's the best. And yeah, there we are. We yeah. did it. This is our third episode and I think we're getting better at it. I think so too. I think I said, um, less. Oh yeah. That was the other thing. I was thinking about my word whiskers mm-hmm. and I hope I didn't say a bajillion different so's every ep- word. So, so for oh. anyone, <laughs> I just did it for anyone who was thinking the first episode, wow, they don't have any word whiskers. That's not true. Um, my husband is just really good at editing. And so yeah. He makes oh. us sound smart. <laughs> yeah. The first time I heard it, I was like, Roman is a genius. He is. He's the I think he greatest is. producer known to at least this household. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true. Because I was like, this actually sounds great. It does, yeah. Meanwhile, he's like, I've been staring at this computer for 37 hours. He's like, if you say um one more time. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, oh gosh, there it is again. Yeah. Anyway, word whiskers, they're hard to get away from. They really are. We're, we'll work on it mm-hmm. for you guys, though, and for my husband's sanity. Yes. <laughs> Although, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my hand at editing. He's going to teach me some oh. editing. That would be great. I should also learn. I should contribute to this venture. Uh, you are contributing. I'm just driving. That's what I do. <laughs> I drive to your house. <laughs> hey, we are both both doing the research. You you made a good social media post. You made a funny meme. Mm. I will be here for the memes. Yeah. I'll meme it up if anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what I'm good for. Um, do we have anything else before we sign off um don't if you can help it if you can help it don't climb into water towers that mm-hmm. is just a psa or drink california or water. drink california <laughs> water um don't go anywhere with christopher columbus and if anyone tries the elevator game let us know if you went to a different dimension and if you are you stuck in that dimension you can't tell us? We're really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and if the Red Cross just ends up being the uh, flag to Switzerland, you are in a great place. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes you to Switzerland. Oh, my gosh. That would be I'm like, sign me up. That sounds nice. Um, yeah, I don't think I have yeah. anything else. So um, until next time. Um, don't go gentle into that good night. Oh. oh, I don't know where that came from. I like that. <laughs> And, um, I don't no stay away from the devil's triangle <laughs> and <laughs> good night Stay away from the devil <laughs> and the devil. He's, he's got, he's got bad news. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>